Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, FBC takes Fiji Labour Party to court. Youth suicide at an all-time high. And Lami Kuala's top child helpline. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation and its chief executive is taking the Fiji Labour Party to court over a statement published on social media by the party against the national broadcaster. The posting was done on a Facebook page titled Fiji Labour Party on July 15, 2016, alleging, amongst other things, that operations of the FBC have been tarnished by corrupt dealings. Pranita Prakash reports. Amongst a vast array of accusations on social media, the Fiji Labour Party claims that the FBC took a loan of $27 million with the Fiji Development Bank, which it was unable to service. Firstly, that amount is wrong. And the claim associated with that amount is also wrong. You can call it wrong, you can call it fake, you can call it preposterous. And uh, it is something that, uh, you know, FBC as, in, uh, as a respected entity will not tolerate any longer. The statement, which remains on FLP's Facebook page since last year, also claims the FBC approached a number of banks and financial institutions to take over the initial loan. However, none would fund it. The political party claims FBC chief executive Riya Sayed Kayum approached his brother, Riya Sayed Kayum, to bail him out of the mess. Labour further claims that during the refurbishment of the FBC radio and the setup of the FBC TV, most of the equipment were brought in through a New Zealand radio company owned by close associates of the Sayed Kayum brothers. The Labour Party has basically claimed on its uh, social media page that uh, the FBC has been involved in scams uh, for the last few years um, and uh, has uh, implicated me and, and FBC as a whole. And I think, you know, it is a huge insult to the staff and management of FBC that has worked really, really hard to make FBC what it is today. For the last almost a decade, a lot of work has gone into the FBC. We have made tremendous progress. And for an entity like the Fiji Labour Party to come and uh, discredit us based on some false information that we don't know where they got this information from, created or, or otherwise, and published on social media for the whole world to see and to make uh, their um, aspersions on it, is, is, is totally wrong. Fiji Labour Party leader Mahendra Chaudhry refused to make any comment when contacted today. FBC is seeking general, special and punitive damages and a permanent injunction restraining the FLP and or its agents from further posting circulating and distributing the statement containing the libel or anything similar. A hearing date is yet to be set. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Fiji has the highest suicide rate amongst youths in the South Pacific, four times more than our road death toll. It has been established that most adolescents considering suicide or who have attempted suicide shy away from using specialized mental health services. Ritika Pratap reports. It's happening every 36 hours. Mental health and suicide are two of the most serious social and health issues facing our country. We have relationship problems, uh, rejection from families and intimate others. We have examination results, poor examination results, unrealistic expectations from communities and families, as well as uh, bullying in school violence on social media and in the community at the grassroots. Youth Chems for Mental Health is the only organization in the country that looks after mental health and suicide issues among young people. We build up um, the trust through Facebook messages, uh, through social media, and then we get them to come down if we feel that they're uh, at a greater risk to themselves. Then we provide an enabling safe space where they're able to talk about their problems, talk about the issues. We work on a safety plan for them. There are only around 1,300 mental health professionals in the country. 
Champs for Mental Health believe we need more professionals so that we can evenly distribute them to urban and maritime areas. The volunteers associated with the group conduct around 400 awareness sessions annually. Schools outreach in which we go out to schools uh, sharing the messages of hope and using a creative art exp expression uh, that is uh, in a form of a play or poetry and just sharing that messages of hope on how to build young people to be resilient. In the last five years, over 600 young persons committed suicide while the same number attempted to take their own lives. There is a need to create a sense of belonging for the youth at home and in the community and this can only be done through public awareness. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Save the Children Fiji has begun its discipline and parenting training program in the Lamy area after the town topped the list of child helpline callers seeking advice. Chief Executive Iris Lowe McKenzie says the callers made were mostly about physical punishment and communication breakdown between parents and children. Kelly Vadala reports. Violence against children takes many forms and is often shrouded in secrecy. But most importantly, it is a violation of human rights. We hear about the sexual abuse of children all the time in the media, um, and the ages are getting younger. And then we also know that um, in terms of physical punishment, that children are still being punished uh, physically. More than 30 parents are part of a four-week training program underway in the community just west of Suva. Child Protection Officer Mitu Osborne says it's important that children are protected and well guided when growing up. Gone are the days where we smack children because smacking them wouldn't get anywhere. This training workshop sort of opened up our parents' eyes that there's another way to it. You know, we don't have to do it the violent way. A lot of the parents were brought up with physical punishment. But now that we have the alternative, it's about learning new ways of disciplining our children without physical punishment. So what we've done Lamy now, what we're going to do is go back to the communities to do an evaluation. Save the Children Fiji says children who are abused and exposed to violence exhibit emotional, psychological and behavioral consequences that can have a negative impact later in life. Kelly Batala, FBC News. University of Fiji Registrar Kamlesh Arya has been given the green light to travel overseas by the High Court. He will leave the country on September 10th and return on the 24th. Arya received a bail variation to travel to Canberra, Australia with his wife. His next court appearance will be on September 6th before he departs. He's charged with one count of abuse of office and one count of dishonestly causing a loss. It is alleged he authorized loans amounting to over $116,000 from school grant monies in 2014. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services Pediatric Oncology Unit has treated 20 children for cancer this month. Unit Registrar Dr. Miriama Tukana Thagad says the awareness campaign during the Child Cancer Month was successful as they registered four new cases at the CWM Hospital in Suva. Rachel Nath has more. The Child Cancer Month aims to inform parents about symptoms associated with cancer and the importance of early detection. We've created awareness. Uh, we're happy that WOWS is on board with uh, helping us in creating awareness uh, in terms of identifying the early warning signs for her childhood cancers. Walk on Walk Strong Fiji has generated a lot of awareness towards this Child Cancer Month. Uh, to kick off the month, we had reorganized um, a, a walk. Uh, slash fun run that it was, it was, it was successful. We were overwhelmed with the, the response that we got. We, we, didn't really, we didn't expect that, but we had about 541 uh, participants turn up on that day. Whilst Fiji is also working on eliminating the stigma associated with cancer in Fiji. There's a way of thinking that, you know, uh, your child is cancer because you did something or because you're cursed by God. Eh? You know, those, those, <laughs> Those are not the kind of things that we should be throwing at, at, at families who are going through that journey. The most common cancer with children in Fiji is leukemia, followed by bone cancer and brain tumor. Rachel Nall, FBC News. Still to come, over 2,000 receive SME grants. And students prepare for first day of final school term. That's coming up. Rada Ranavika, 
Bula FM nambah dua NSR. It was a day of celebration for over 2,300 people who received $1,000 each from the government today. The micro and small business grant was given out by the Minister for Tourism, Fires Koya, who says this marks an exciting chapter for each recipient. Anna Ravulo reports. It was a day that a lot of people from Vrewa, Neita, Siri and Tailevu were looking forward to as the grant will take their businesses to another level. The grant I received today will help me purchase more stocks for my canteen that I currently just started. I have a business in weaving mats and screen printing and I am so thankful for the grant because it will help a lot in my business. The Minister for Tourism says they have had a lot of successful stories since the inception of the micro and small business grant. The best stories highlighted are to encourage you to work smart and be innovative in your various business ventures and to take advantage of the business opportunities that are available. Its recipients say they will be able to make the much-needed investments in their business. This grant provided by the government will help me buy my tools that I really need for my business. I've always wanted to show people my talent of baking. So this grant will uh, allow me to buy my stove and sell cakes to the people, uh, especially to uh, you know the Maramanaitas. I have a piggery farm and their style is not well built, so this is one way I can improve the style and continue my piggery farming. To date, over 9,700 people have benefited from the grant. The government has allocated $6.4 million for this project in the 2017-2018 national budget. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The Australian government has provided $1.1 million to the Fiji Red Cross Society to reposition its humanitarian supplies. Australian High Commissioner to Fiji Margaret Toomey opened the society's storage facility in Lautoka this afternoon. Rapata Valeme reports. The new storage facility will enable the Fiji Red Cross Society to increase its rich work. We all know it's a lot more than about simple supplies. It's about what the supplies represent. Uh, they represent a community that wants to be prepared. A community that wants to be prepared recognises that, unfortunately, we do live in a world where disasters are frequent and they can be devastating. Operations Manager Ezra Malendu says the aim is to extend the storage facilities in the Maritime Islands. I can now guarantee you, if this incident happens after the ice peak, in Coral again, I can guarantee you that we have an office already in place in Coral. An estimated 1,200 people will be assisted from the supplies stored in this new facility. This is equivalent to 250 households. The society has also extended its reach to Kandavu, Rambi, Rotuma, Lakemba and Vanombalavu. Rapata Valime, FBC News. The last term of the school year is important for students as they gear up for external examinations. Parents and students flocked to stationery shops this morning as they prepared for the term ahead. Billy Maina Nangelevuki has more. Parents are making extra efforts to provide the best for their children in the upcoming term. Prioritize your children. Uh, studies comes first. Everything comes next later. <laughs> this term is a crucial term for students as most of them sit for their exams. Meanwhile, after a generally rainy two weeks break, many students say they use the opportunity to prepare for the final term ahead. Don't go around it, please. Yeah, I'll just pray so I can pass. Study, revise my work, and went through my past test papers. Just to stay home and uh, just to read back my notes so that I can study for the tenth exam. The Permanent Secretary for Education, Iowane Tiko, is advising parents to prepare their children well for the completion of their school year. Parents too, please call the children, sit them down, counsel them well. We're into another very vital school term because we expect the best from them so that the teachers don't waste their time trying to discipline them in the classroom. Students will be returning to school tomorrow for the final term. This is the most crucial term as a number of students will be sitting for their external exams. 
The famous Republic of Fiji military forces band today took to the streets of Lombasa to mark its 100th anniversary. The band marched through Lombasa town and also sang numbers for the northerners. From its beginnings in 1917, the band has been involved in a number of events, both locally and abroad. The band, which was established during World War I and was known as the Subatown Band then, is also world-renowned, having performed for the Queen as well. Ahead in sports with Jamie, he will have a wrap-up of our Fijian players from the France Top 14, but up next, Rachel with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. FDB marks new appointments. And in growing Fiji, FRA continues with Suva Road Works. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokroa of Neabu Wendemburgo Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM. Welcome back, leading business tonight. The European Union and the Australian government today handed over equipment worth around $330,000 to the Fiji Sugar Corporation. This was done on behalf of the training support to the sugarcane industry project, marking the completion of the four-year project. The assets were part of the EU-funded training support implemented by the Australia Pacific Technical College to improve the livelihoods of sugarcane farmers by promoting income generation through sugarcane farming or alternative alternative livelihoods. The equipment included vehicle, hand uh, and electrical tools, training resources, computer projects, as well as other office equipment. More than 1,600 people, including over 800 FSC employees, were trained. Over 350 farmers were also upskilled through various workshops to enhance their technical business and leadership skills. As a first in 50 years, the Fiji Development Bank has appointed a woman to an executive role, including appointments to four other key roles which will be held by women. Acting Chief Executive Nafita Lei Zakazaka says the appointment are an achievement for the bank, setting a precedent for staff to pursue greater career aspirations. Zakazaka says the five leadership positions are dynamic and empowering operational roles within the bank. And we now join Southern Alda from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Good evening. Let's take a look at the action on our local stock market last week. There were four securities traded on the platform, Amalgamated Telecom Holdings, RB Patel Group, Fijian Holdings, and Fiji Care Insurance. And there were three price movements. Amalgamated Telecom Holdings Limited increased by 11.1%, closing at a new all-time high share price of $1.80. Supermarket chain RB Patel Group Limited also recorded an increase by 0.3% to close a new maximum share price of $3.31. Lastly, Fijian Holdings Limited saw their share price increase by 3.3% to close at $4.70. After accounting for the various share price movements, the overall market value concluded at $1.64 billion, an increase of 4.97% from previous week. The SPSC Total Return Index saw an increase of 4.97% as well to conclude at 4042.13. That is a wrap from our local stock market. Back to you, Rachel. Thanks for the updates of another looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar rose against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close above 322 and 48 cents respectively. While closer to home, the Australian and New Zealand dollars weakened closing at 60 and 66 cents, while the PNG strengthened to close at 135. As for the commodities market, everything rose today as oil prices were up to close at 47.84 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,294 an ounce and silver closed at 17.16 an ounce.
And in Growing Fiji tonight, major road rehabilitation is being carried out to improve MacArthur Road uh, under the uh, Suva Roads Upgrade Project Phase 1. FRA Acting Chief Executive Robert Sen says the road works to improve safety will start at Victoria Parade and will end at Gordon Street. Sen says the work includes repairing the uh, damaged concrete pavements, curbs, channels, footpath and resurfacing to prolong the life of the roads. MacArthur Street will remain closed during the rehabilitation. All work is expected to be completed by the end of October. And that's business this evening. Now to the latest in sports. Here's Jamie. Thank you, Rachel. And good evening. But before you run out of studio, Rachel, a little birdie told me it is your birthday today. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Well, from the team, happy birthday. Do you feel a little wiser and a little <laughs> taller at least today? A little taller, definitely. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your celebrations tonight and we'll expect some cake tomorrow. Thank you. Coming up in sports this evening, PJ and Rua present Itatawa, head of NRC. And senior reps ready to lead Fiji football side. This and more coming up. I am a member of the Mirchi FM is hot. Players in the Fiji and Rua team know they have a great opportunity to further their careers when the Australian NRC begins this weekend. Being in the team is a step closer for players trying to make it to the Vodafone Flying Fijian squad as national selectors will be keeping a close eye on the development. Rohit Deo tells us more. The players in the Fiji and Rua team have a lot to play for in the NRC. It's a great learning curve, a great experience uh, to try to help against uh, top elite uh, rugby players from Australia who have been uh, on that uh, competition for so long, some in Super Rugby, so it's a good opportunity. Super Rugby captain John Stewart says the players have been talking about progressing from here. But, uh, we've talked about uh, trying to prove ourselves to our uh, flying Fijian coaches that we can start uh, knocking on the doors in, in just doing that, we can prove ourselves by performing well. Stewart says the team needs to lift its game if they are to challenge Brisbane City in the opener. The boys have been camping for three weeks and the preparation has been really going well. The young boys are really learning quickly. And what we've talked about, uh, how we can conquer or, or challenge the Brisbane City boys is to bring up our standard. By meaning that it's, it's all about mental toughness. The side leaves for Australia on Thursday and will play Brisbane City at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the team presented its Itatau to President Major General Retired Chochi Konrote today, ahead of its debut in Australia's National Rugby Championship this weekend. While receiving the side this afternoon, the president told the players that as elite sportsmen, they have the opportunity to be great examples to young Fijians, especially with awareness and NCDs. The team leaves for Australia on Wednesday and will make the NRC debut against Brisbane City at 7 p.m. on Saturday. The Brisbane side will boast the services of former Wallaby First Five, Quade Cooper. Every confidence that you will succeed with your aims to perform exceptionally well throughout the competition. Acknowledge the great effort and sacrifices you have all made so that you can be part of this team. Fijian players playing in the top 14 rugby competition in France lived up to expectations in the first round that started over the weekend. From setting up and scoring tries to dazzling the fans, the Fijians once again showed why they are amongst the best in the league. Rohit Deo has more. Vodafone flying Fijian wing Nemani Nandolo made a return from injury with this try for his Montpellier side in their 48-19 win over Argent.
We say another level was also on the score sheet for Stade Franco. However, his side went down to Lyon at 25-16. Défilé, le CO ne retrouve toujours pas la formule gagnante de la première. Leone Nakarawa et Albert Vulivuli came off the bench for Racing 92 in their 25-21 win over plus tard, la sanction tombe de repasser devant à 3 minutes du terme de la rencontre. Sur le ralenti, on admire le numéro du deuxième ligne. Fernandez. Pedeli Yato's try had Clement in the driving seat against Bordeaux Beglis as opponents made a comeback in which Penny Ravai scored an all-important try to help his team edge Clement 32-25. The second round will be played this weekend. Toulouse plays section Paloise at 6.45 a.m. on Sunday and you can watch the match live on FPC TV. Rohit Dev, FPC Sports. The national football side is confident they have the right leaders to steer their team forward against Indonesia in a friendly match this week. Roy Krishna joins the team camp today to captain the side and will have three vice captains to assist him. Krishna Rita Omanu reports. Coach Christoph Gamel is confident with his selection for leadership on the field. Uh, Roy is there, you know, as a professional and, and, and as a man, as man, he's a good uh, person. Uh, he's always guiding them. But also when he's not there, it's important to have people who are in the, in the same line. So Simeone, uh, Remeru, they have been elected. Eh? And uh, Amani Makoy have been elected. They are doing uh, well their duties. And that's why it's important. But when uh, Roy is coming, he gives the last uh, step more. Discipline will be a key focus for the Bula boys. Well, I guess the main thing uh, that we expect from the boys is uh, discipline on and off the field and I guess that is the most important thing. And for us going into this tour, it's a learning curve also for us, uh, the results is immaterial. But it's just to gauge, gauge our performance and uh, where we are at the moment. And I guess it's a positive side for the fish football in uh, taking us to another part of the world. 22 players and six officials leave tomorrow ahead of their friendly match in Indonesia on Saturday. Chris and Rita Aumanu, FBC Sports. Fiji Pearls coach Vicky Wilson is excited about the under-21 players who have been selected into the national squad for the 2017-18 series. Wilson named her final squad over the weekend, which includes under-21 captain Episaki Kahatoka, alongside reps Maliana Rusipakula and Alisi Nangiri. The team is now concentrating on match fitness. As Wilson says, the players need to be mentally and physically ready. Is that they come in in relatively good shape. And we know that to compete internationally, you have to be fit. You have to be athletic. And we certainly we have a great deal of athleticism, but the fitness is something that is just so, so important. Canterbury hung on to the Iran Foley Shield last night by holding off a determined Otago challenge in Christchurch for a 30-24 win in the Mitre 10 competition. Yeah. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media. Samsung joins the smart speaker race. Details coming up. Bola <laughs> New media Samsung has confirmed it is developing its own voice control smart speaker for the home to rival devices by Amazon and Google. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Another week has started and has commenced with mixed conditions. A beautiful sunny day was interrupted by patchy rain in few parts of the country. Let's take a quick look in the west. It was mostly cloudy with thunderstorms rumbling but to no sign of any rain. 
Eastwards from Pekhapa to Suva, a warm sunny day with light rain. And up in Vanua level, it was largely dry with clear to cloudy spells. At sea, east to northeast winds 15 to 20 knots with moderate to rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 11.49 with a low tide tomorrow morning at 6.13. The beautiful sunrise will be at 6.18. For tomorrow, expect another day of full-on sunshine together with light rain in few places of the nation. Tomorrow's temps, Lambasa and the Western Division will be much warmer with highs of 30 degrees. And looking further on to Wednesday, we might have to battle between sunny skies and intervals of light rain as this trend will be around for a few more days. And that, Jackie, wraps up our FBC weather for tonight. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, since the final term of school begins from tomorrow, we asked, how important will Term 3 be in terms of your future? All studies from uh, the first two terms are tested in the third term. It's an ex -term, external uh, examinations term and it is very important because it determines uh, my progress within the term. Term 3 would be a crucial one and uh, that's because the syllabi of the school uh, usually ends at this term. And not only that, but then most of us from our schools will be sitting for external exams. Really is important, um, especially for us Form 7 and Form 6 and those sitting for external exams because um, it's the main exam and for those who are, for those in Form 6 that are going to Foundation, going to do foundation next year. It is important for me because uh, it's my first year in secondary school and I'm going to have an extended exam, not only me from 3 to 2, and need to study hard in order to get through next year to one four. Recapping the main stories, FBC takes Fiji Labour Party to court. Fiji has the highest suicide rate amongst youths in the South Pacific and Fijians start French T14 on a high. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. The results from last week we had asked, should those found guilty of drunk driving have their licenses terminated? 80% said yes. This week we are asking, will cheaper flights increase connectivity between Viti level and Vanua level? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, the sun setting in Nausori yesterday afternoon, sent in by Hilan Davui, taken from Syria Park. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Good night. Radio Fiji One and Radio Fiji One,